Hello, my name is Susanna Dalewska. I am a student at the University of East Anglia in Norwich and I am presenting on our work on earthquake statistics titled Why don't earthquakes follow the Gutenberg Richter law during the 2018 eruption on Caldera Collapse of Kilauea Volcano, Hawaii? Kilauea Volcano is a basaltic shield volcano on Big Island of Hawaii and is one of the most active and well-monitored volcanoes on the planet. On the 3rd of May, erupted fissures opened in the Lower East Rift Zone with lava effusion rates exceeding 100 meters cubed per second. To feed the eruption in the Lower East Rift Zone, magma withdrew from the summit system. As magma withdrew, periodic explosion from the vent gradually evolved into caldera collapse events. Each caldera collapse event was preceded by a near-linear increase in seismicity and was associated with an earthquake of magnitude between 4.7 and 5.4. After each collapse, salmon seismicity dropped to near zero for up to an hour before a resumption of the gradual increase. In total, there are 62 collapse events with an average periodicity of 32 hours and average total seismicity of 523 events per cycle. On the graph, you can see the changes in seismicity rates and the vertical displacement of the caldera throughout the eruption. The bottom graph is the zoomed in section of five days in June, which represents the evolution of the collapse cycles within, with rising seismicity leading to a collapse and then a drop in seismicity afterwards. Seismicity, lava effusion and gas emissions all declined rapidly on the 4th of August. Gutenberg-Richter law is commonly used as a forecasting tool for earthquake statistics. It describes the frequency magnitude distribution of earthquakes in a given region and time period according to the formula shown here. The NM is a total number of earthquakes of magnitude M or above. A is a constant and B, or B value, is a parameter used to characterize the magnitude distribution of regional earthquakes. When the log of the number of earthquakes of magnitude M or above is plotted against the magnitude, it normally produces a straight line graph where the gradient is the B value. In laboratory experiments, it has been shown that the B value is inversely proportional to the variential stress. Whilst gutenberg richter law is commonly used in seismic hazard assessment, geological investigations on some faults have led to an identification of another model for the magnitude frequency distribution of earthquakes. The characteristic earthquake model phenomenon was first observed at the St. Edward's Fault. This model suggests that equal displacement along a fault corresponds to equal size earthquakes and the time between the maximum magnitude events is generally inactive. This figure shows the comparison of magnitude frequency distributions of earthquakes following the Gutenberg-Richter law and the characteristic earthquake model. On the top, you can see the Gutenberg-Richter distribution with the typical log-linear relationship. On the bottom right, you can see a similar graph for the characteristic earthquake model, where the gradient varies at different points. It is apparent that linear extrapolation of the B value from the Gutenberg-Richter law would lead to a gross underestimation of the large events in areas where earthquake behavior resembles the characteristic earthquake model. This may be dangerous, especially when the Gutenberg-Richter law is used for hazard assessment and management and forecasts considerably fewer large earthquakes than actually occur. To study earthquake statistics, a circular area with a radius of 4 kilometers around the caldera is used as shown on the map here. The location of collapse events is shown for reference as the red dots. Using the National Earthquake Information Center catalog, a total of over 28,000 earthquakes which occurred between the 17th of May and the 4th of August were used in the analysis. The timings of earthquakes were normalized between T0 and T1, with collapses occurring at T1. The subcatalog of events was used to plot the following figures. Figure A shows the variation in the number of earthquakes with time split by magnitude. This illustrates the unequal distribution between large and small magnitude events and that the proportion of large magnitude events increases with time. Figure B, which is the magnitude frequency distribution, demonstrates the lack of correspondence that this earthquake catalogue has to the gutenberg relation. For this relation to hold, we would require fewer large magnitude events and more small events. In addition, there seem to be two discrete groups of events, with no earthquakes with magnitudes between 4.5 and 5.2. This distribution re resembles the characteristic earthquake model instead. In figure C, we can see a plot of earthquake rate and its first derivative. This plot is used to identify the three phases of activity. Phase 1 with an increasing rate of seismicity, phase 2 with a decreasing rate of seismicity, and phase 3 when the seismicity rate is approximately constant. 
Figure D shows the frequency magnitude distribution of earthquakes within each of the three phases. Even when frequency magnitude relations are considered for each defined phase of seismicity, there remains a lack of correspondence to the gutenberg richter relation in phases 1 and 3. The earthquakes in phase 2 appear to behave accordingly to the gutenberg richter law, whilst the earthquakes in phase 3 resemble the characteristic earthquake model. In addition, the magnitude of completeness for phase 3 is significantly higher than for other phases. There is an apparent absence of low-magnitude earthquakes. The question here is whether the low-magnitude events are being masked by high-magnitude ones, or if this low-magnitude seismicity is missing. In addition to studying the changes within the collapse cycles, the inter-event evolution has also shown some unexpected behaviour. Similar patterns can be observed between the two figures here, where both graphs can be divided into two sections, from the 1st to the 22nd collapse, and from the 23rd to the 50th collapse. The first section shows an increasing rate of earthquakes and a decreasing B value, which may be a proxy for increasing stress. The second section sees a decreasing rate of earthquakes and a gently increasing B value trend. This change has occurred between the 90th and the 20th of June. A possible explanation for this change is that similar loading cycles were happening in a progressively more consolidated and less accommodating environment, up to a point with the smallest B value. Another interpretation for the changes, including the decreasing event rate, is that the eruption had started coming to an end from the 20th of June. It doesn't, however, explain why the seismicity stopped suddenly in early August rather than slowly go back to the background level. This cartoon shows the proposed mechanism for variations in seismicity associated with collapse events at the caldera. As magma drains from summit storage regions to feed eruptive activity in the lower east rift zone, the floor of the caldera becomes unsupported. The stress transfer from the caldera floor to the surrounding rocks in the second phase leads to a seismicity increase which follows the gutenberg richter law. The seismicity then culminates in a large magnitude event during which the floor of the caldera drops. The cycle repeats. The caldera system grows from subcritical in phase 1 to critical in phase 2 to supercritical in phase 3. Here are the references. Thank you so much for listening.